the champions, our defenses. I, I got to watch that last night in great detail. Our defense is playing at an extremely high level. Uh, I haven't watched all the secondaries in the country, defensive backfields, but uh, I take ours, uh, the way, especially the way they're playing, the way they work, the way they're coached. Uh, we went from one of the worst pass defenses in America two years ago. To, uh, and I know we're number one in the Big Ten, but we have to be up there in the national rankings. I haven't seen that, but um, playing at a high, high level. And that's obviously correlated with uh, the pressure we get to put on the uh, quarterback. Tyquan Lewis graded a champion. Joey Bosa, Adolphus Washington, Raquan McMillan, Josh Perry, Eli Apple, Garyon Conley, Tyvis Powell, and the co-players of the game were Darren Lee and Von Bell. So obviously the the ones that did not were, it looks like we have a couple interior guys, but the four guys in the secondary, the three backers, that's a that's a heck of a day against an offense we had a lot of respect for going into it. Uh, guys, that, uh, an offense that not just we felt had a very good quarterback and skill, but well coached and did a variety of things that our guys practiced well. On offense, no champions. We did not uh, did not do well. Uh, uh, one of the worst executed uh, performances that since we've been here, and so uh, we'll get that corrected. Special teams was solid, and we had uh, let's see here. Player special efforts was Jalen Marshall and Eric Smith. Um, and the Von Bell also got the uh, award for kickoff cover. And then the special teams player of the game was Chris Worley. And uh, just great effort on punt kickoff and punt block starting on three phases. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and hit it with the, the quarterback situation. That seems to be a theme. And had a, a conversation with uh, one of them uh, yesterday. and going to have another one today. And I think because of all the um, intrigue by it, that you'll hear someone say that, uh, you know, how can you play quarterback with someone looking over your shoulder? And my comment to that person was, well, I mean, it was, it, no one's complaining, but how do you not, you know, if you think you're going to play at the next level, they're going to be standing, there's going to be probably one better than you standing right next to you. So get used to it. You are going to look, that doesn't mean you get hooked. If you have a bad day, you get replaced. And that might not be everyone's philosophy, and that's okay. That's okay. So we're going to play. Uh, I haven't decided yet. We're going to have conversations. And today, um, not one is beating out the other. And they're not playing great. So once again, if that's an excuse, which I call it an excuse, of how can you perform with someone looking over your shoulder. Um, NFL quarterbacks do. I've never had one not. We've always had a backup quarterback. just happens the backup quarterback here, whoever it may be, is really good. So we have to get them performing. It's not that. It's, we just have to perform better. And uh, we're turning the ball over at an alarming rate. And we're not playing well on the offensive front. So all those things have been addressed. And it's more coaching than uh, player performance. So we're going to get that fixed. And, and uh, I expect a, a much better performance uh, Saturday uh, from our guys. So with that said, uh, I'll answer any questions. say that not one has beaten out the other yet, does that mean that Cardale is still likely to I start? Don't know. When you when you go through a week, can you take us through the how you have managed these guys in terms of practice reps and game reps? Cardale's got most of the, uh, the one reps. You know, he's he's a high volume right now guy. Uh, JT's a very efficient guy and he stands right behind him, gets the same reps, just not actual behind center. Um, so those are all things that haven't been determined yet. Do you think that any of the other the offensive line seems that the last couple of weeks struggled. Does that have anything to do with playing two different quarterbacks? No. No, no. It has something to do with uh, facing uh, a variety of defenses. We did not prepare our guys for the, you know, once again, and it's, it just sounds bizarre, and it, and it is. But uh, Northern Illinois changed their whole defense, and, and we weren't able to adjust and adapt, and we slowed down the offense line. So we're playing defense and offense right now, and it's not working. So we're going to take a much more aggressive approach to the way we go about our business. Second row right, Dave. Urban, kind of a offbeat local question, but last week on your radio show you mentioned you tried to hire Toledo coach Matt Campbell for your staff. Going back to that time, what stood out about him? And I, I guess you can just take me back to that time. Yeah, were. that's a great question. He, uh, he at the time, was uh, the, the, the number one assistant at Toledo. And I, I was putting together a staff from scratch. And uh, I kind of had an idea with uh, Tom Herman, because I worked on that a little bit previous to that. But other than that, uh, no idea. And then I started recruiting. And uh, 
he's really well known throughout the state of Ohio. Obviously, he's got Bowling Green ties, where I do too. And then obviously, I have Mount Union ties, which I know those guys real well too. And it was just, the feedback was real positive. And we, we have a great relationship, and I, I, I think he's, uh, he's a star in the business right now. Front row, Bill. When you watch the tape of the offensive performance, what stood out to you? Was it a bunch of different things? Was it one? Yeah, no, a bunch of different things. And, and obviously, when no one grades a winning performance, a bunch of different things. <coughs> no theme at all? Or was it just each time it was somebody else messing up? If someone's going to ask this question, yeah, we didn't play very well. And, and it wasn't, we don't do this anyways. It's not the quarterback. It's not the O-line. It's a variety of things uh, that we have to play better. The, we, if you look historically, what uh, an Ohio State offense is for us is uh, uh, control the line of scrimmage, uh, best perimeter blocking in America, which we had last year, and a very good solid play action passing attack. And none, that's not what's going on. So we're going to get that fixed. Front row, Dave. Coach, uh, this is obviously your offense, uh, but there was a lot of turnover on the offensive coaching staff during the offseason. Do you feel like, are you guys all on the same page right now? Are you happy with it? We're getting there. It's not as smooth any time you have transition. We lost two. Stan Drayton was a very quality coach, and so was uh, Tom Herman, obviously. Uh, but we've uh, hired two very quality guys. I, I just think we, you know, we're going to adapt and change some things, and, and uh, well, I'm anxious to wish we were playing tomorrow. Coach Herman used to always talk about how he liked calling the place from the press box as a sterile environment. He just enjoyed that. I know everybody's different. Um, is that something you guys might look into? We're looking into some of that. You know, uh, Ed Warner's by, you know, it's not like there's a demotion or something like that. But we're going to, you know, and Tim's been here long enough now. The way it would work is I say Tim or uh, Dan Mullen or, or uh, Tom Herman, run this, run this, and it's boom. And we're on the same page and we're going, we're not quite there yet. And then also, if we go jet tempo, that's got to be from upstairs because you can't see anything down there. So those are all things we're, we're going to get cleaned up. Second row middle, Ryan. If there's ever something you don't like out of a specialist, you know, all those guys have their own coaches generally, and, you know, Cam's is in Australia. So how do you handle that dynamic? Do you just let, you know, them sort it out with their coaches? Do you ever talk to them? And just how do you No, we, as far as getting that extra coaching, well, I, I met the guy, and uh, he came over and visited us, and obviously they're far away. But I always think that a specialist, a kicker or a punter, um, should have that extra guy that he works with. I know our kicker does, and, and uh, no, I encourage that. Because we don't, unfortunately, you only have nine coaches, and I'm kind of the guy that uh, coaches those guys. And punting, I, I have a pretty good understanding of. Kicking, I really don't. And uh, so I always encourage those guys to have a, a guru or a, a mentor or coach that work with them in the off season. Do you let them handle everything? Like if there's something you don't, <coughs> if, if Cam's not getting enough hang time or. No, 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 Pun, punting, we handle that. Okay. Yeah, the kicking is the, the strange guys, those kickers. So we just <laughs> kick them through the upright. Far left, Matt. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned turnovers, um, turning the ball over. <coughs> How do you handle that other than emphasizing it? Is there anything you, do when yeah, you have to look at how and every, you evaluate each one. We had three turnovers, three interceptions. Uh, one was, you know, all three were absolutely inexcusable. You know, sometimes there'll be something where a guy gets hit as he's delivering a ball. Uh, Zeke Elliott, who's usually pretty good, uh, laid on the ground. And Curtis has really been good and dropped, you know, the guy put his helmet right on the ball. So I'm evaluating. That has an impact on who touches the ball. If I see, you know, Mike Thomas one time. He didn't get fumbled, but he swung his arm around, and we just really watch that and teach through it, coach through it. That's how. There was also like they weren't turnovers, but some sloppiness in terms of like drop balls and yeah. yeah Braxton um, dropped us now. I'm just wondering, is um, are guys trying to do too much? Do you see pressing there? Or uh, what, good question. What? And um, yeah, it's it's a fight for the ball a little bit too. And um, those, that's a very good question. And. and uh, I guess if you're only playing three guys, but we play more than three because we have more than three. I'm talking about the skill set. So that's observant, and I, I think there is something to that, and that's our job to calm it down and let them go play. Because there was a, I mean, one's a right here, and we dropped the ball. The other one we motion in, and we between the exchange, we dropped the ball. Front row left, Doug. Urban, you talk a lot about wanting to get the ball to your best playmakers. Do you feel like you guys have been doing that? Did you do that Saturday with the play calling? No. And then, you know, a couple of times we did and it didn't get to them. So we'll get better. The 
specifically with Braxton, you guys, I think, had eight direct snaps to him against Hawaii. I think it was just two last week. Do you like that direct snap to him? Is it possible that takes this quarterback out of any rhythm when he comes in for that? Yeah, I like it because it's a, uh, one of the best athletes in America with a bow in his hand. And, and is there sometimes a rhythmic issue? It worked pretty well against Virginia Tech. You know, and so we're not going to stop that. Maybe we won't do as many. That's a flow of the game type thing. Because we are have some Q runs, and you don't want to necessarily hammer your other quarterbacks. So. In, in looking back, um, obviously, there, you said there were multiple areas offensively where things weren't going right. When you took Cardale out of the game, was that the right time to take him out? Or is there, looking back, is there any second thoughts about you? About I think it was the right time. What, what made you? Uh, turnovers. Yeah. That read on that second turnover yeah. was. Because I guess the question is, it seemed like JT had a similar read on his pick later, but he didn't come out. Right. So what's the? How do you determine what what causes a change of quarterback? Again, is it just? Well, it's a it's a feel of the game. You know, it's not something I've written down, and it's something that I, I have to make sure. That, not that you're on the same page, but they are. And so and that's not easy because the thing that thing that I worry about and I know is happening is just the overwhelming mess that is on these 19, 20, 21 year olds uh, as far as, you know, that's why I'm probably going to say just let them stay away from the quarterback for a while. Let them just get settled in and go. Very unique situation that, you know, I, I constantly evaluate my am I doing the right thing by them? And uh, I don't know any better other than if you have a very good player at the number two spot, number one's not performing, go in there. If your number two is not very good, then, but I don't know where that, at this kind of level, I don't know where that is. You know, that's when I hear that. I, most of the people that say that I haven't played a whole lot. And then, but every once in a while I hear someone say is, you know, how can I play with, well, I'm not looking over your shoulder. If you just perform pretty good, if it's not good, then we have to make a change. And we have to win that darn game. And that was a, that was a, that was a close game. Coach, your psychology guy, what's the difference in psychology between Hunter and Hunter? And how has that psychology affected your kids? I think, very great question, Marty. I think uh, it's affected us offensively. Uh, uh, and we're playing defense and offense right now, and you don't do that. And that, that some people do. We don't. Our history is we, we want to score a lot of points. We want to, you know, our objective is to score a lot of points and still play great defense. So. Uh, very good question. It's something that uh, we have got, I feel, on offense, not defense, defense or special teams. This whole program is uh, the hunter on offense right now for a variety of reasons and not, and not to players. Uh, we're, the, uh, we're, we're sitting back and we're not going to do that anymore. And final question, Mr. Kemp. Yeah, Urban, a couple. Number one, uh, you kind of hinted at it earlier uh, from the quarterback situation. Are you thinking about going with one guy now? And see how it goes. Or so I did. Th let's be clear. I did go yeah. with one guy. Yeah. The guy didn't perform well, and so we went with the backup. Yeah. Yeah. There was no set thing saying that we're a two quarterback system. We're not. The backup's a very good player, whomever that may be. So we are going with the guy. Yeah. And then uh, number two, you guys. I'm not going to say you live on it, but what sets y'all apart is your explosive plays. You right. know, and you had them against Virginia Tech and stuff, and it just. Sort of, do you feel a little bit of a frustration there too in the offense Ooh. about not getting yeah. those? Uh, as is Marty's question, you're the hunted instead of the hunter, and so yeah, we're gonna. Those are all drafts, and that's that's you're, you're exactly right. We recruit players to have explosive plays. We give them opportunities to have explosive plays, and over the last several years, we've for the majority they made them, and we're not doing that right now. So we gotta. That's a high high emphasis right now.